Hello everyone, happy day 16 of Lent. Today is Saturday the 11th. I'm doing this recording a little later than I usually do. Uh, we have a special guest with us today to say hi to Jackie. Hi Jackie. That's Mandolin, that's her voice. I don't know if she wants to be on, uh, on the video or not. She's making her mind up now. Want to pop in and say howdy? Don't hurt nothing, please. Dog. That's Mandolin and Padaway. Padaway. Korean for something. Uh, so, can you close that, please? Yeah. Thank you. So, anyway, happy, happy uh, day 16. Uh, I got a little late start, so I won't be going over the sunrise the sunset is going to be 5 55 p.m for those of you who are following that but by the time this is actually put on the air right now it's 4 30 uh this probably won't go up until right around 5 55 because it takes a while to download onto youtube but anyway so we are doing day 16 of the from the grave devotional a lent devotional uh by aw tozer um so if you want a copy of that, you can find those online, mostly on Barnes & Noble. That's the one I have. The ones on Amazon, they don't have the full copy. They only have the sample version, which they will charge you for if you're not careful. So don't do that. Day 16. The blessedness of possessing nothing. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.3 there is within the human heart a tough, fibrous root of fallen life whose nature is to possess, always to possess. It covets things with a deep and fierce passion. The pronouns my and mine look innocent enough in print, but their constant and universal uses are significant. They express the real nature of the old Adamic man better than a thousand volumes of theology could do. They are verbal symptoms of our deep disease. The roots of our hearts have grown down into things, and we dare not pull up one rootlet lest we die. Things have become necessary to us, a development never originally intended. God's gifts now take the place of God, and the whole course of nature is upset by the monstrous substitution. Our Lord referred to this tyranny of things when he said to his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Matthew sixteen twenty four and 25. Breaking this truth into fragments for our better understanding, it would seem that there is within each of us an enemy which we tolerate at our peril. Jesus called it life and self, or as we would say, the self-life. Its chief characteristic is, it, is its possessiveness. The words gain and profit suggest this. To allow the enemy to live is, in the end, to lose everything. To repudiate it and give up all for Christ's sake is to lose nothing at last, but to preserve everything unto life eternal. And possibly also a hint is given here as to the only effective way to destroy this foe. It is by the cross. Let him take up his cross and follow me. Matthew 16.24 the way to deeper knowledge of God is through the lonely val valleys of soul poverty and abnegation of all things. The blessed ones who possess the kingdom are they who have repudiated every external thing and have rooted from their hearts all sense of possessing. These are the poor in spirit. They have reached an inward state of paralleling the outward circumstances of the common beggar in the streets of Jerusalem. That is what the word poor, as Christ used it, used it, actually means. These blessed poor are no longer slaves to the tyranny of things. They have broken the yoke of the oppressor, and this they have done not by fighting, but by surrendering. Though free from all sense of possessing, they yet possess all things. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let me exhort you. 
to take this seriously. It is not to be understood as mere Bible teaching to be stored away in the mind along with an along with an inert mass of other doctrines. It is a marker on the road to greener pastures, a path chiseled against the steep sides of the mount of God. We dare not try to bypass it if we would follow on at this holy pursuit. We must ascend a step at a time. If we refuse one step, we bring our progress to an end. A warning against giving your heart and your soul to things, to stuff, to ideas that are not God, to even people. Sometimes people can be those things. So we have to remember our place and God's place in our lives and where it should be. And it's okay to have things, uh, but those things should not possess you. They shouldn't control you. And if you ever find yourself under uh, the tyranny of possessions, then it's time to maybe get rid of those things. So let's pray for discernment in that area, and uh, we'll continue on our merry way. Lord, uh, we praise you uh, for the things you have given us, Father God. We thank you for the things you have uh, shown us and, and used uh, for our betterment, Father. But Lord, we do pray that you would give us mastery over those things, that you would uh, help us to have a mind to use them only for your sake, Father God, and not our own. Uh, we do pray, Father God, that uh, you would possess us and help us to follow after you 100% uh, more fully, Lord. And we pray that the Spirit would well up inside of us, Father God, that you would give us a filling of the Holy Spirit uh, to overflowing in our lives so that we don't want to depend on things, Lord. All we need is you. All we need is that bread of life and that, that everlasting water, that eternal source of life and truth, Father, which is you. We do pray, Father, that you would bless us on our walk, on our journey. On day 16 of Lent, we do pray, Father, that you would bless us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Have a good day, or a good night, as it seems, a good afternoon at least, uh, and I will see you tomorrow. We are going to be doing devotions tomorrow in Ephesians. Uh, I will be reading simply from Ephesians, probably 2 and 3, since I skipped last Sunday um, due to other problems. But uh, thank you. Have a good day.